Hi everyone, welcome back to episode 16 of Hive Knits and Nutters podcast with me, Lizzie, the maker behind Hive Knits. You can find me on Instagram as Hive Knits and also on Ravelry as Hive Knits. Hello, if you are new here, then welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm Lizzie, I am um, a knitter who lives in Manchester in the UK and when I'm not knitting, I'm working as a doctor to fund my yarn habit. It's really nice to have you along. <coughs> my voice doesn't normally sound like this, so apologies. Um, returning viewers, hello, welcome back. And as per tradition, every time I come back, sorry it's been such a long time. Um, welcome to the madness of December. Um, it's Friday today and I'm not at work, obviously, uh, because I am working an out of hours um, shift tomorrow, Saturday, so um, I get like today in off instead and I have an hour or so of peace and quiet um, and I'll explain why in just a sec. Um, thank you so much to everyone who sent like well wishes on the last video. Um, I shared with everyone that um, my partner Pete and I had recently got engaged and everyone was so so lovely um yeah sending like congratulations messages so really really appreciated thank you and um another thing that had happened is that we'd welcomed two little uh kittens into our lives Molly and Hugo and the reason I have some peace and quiet right now because believe me when they are around Unless they're asleep, there is not much peace and quiet, especially when I'm like using yarn. They love it. But they have gone to be um, neutered today. My oh, babies. So um, they are currently at the vets. Um, I've had a phone call. They are okay. They're recovering from their anaesthetic. I need to go and pick them up in uh, about an hour and a half. So. I wanted to film this morning, um, but I've kind of just been waiting for a phone call from the vets because I wasn't quite sure what time they would contact me. And I didn't really want to like keep having to check my phone during this, but they've phoned now, everything's good. So I've just got a window of time to get this filmed. So I'm gonna try and be efficient, but efficiency is not my strong point. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm filming today. Not at work, cats are not present. It's, it's great. Um, and I also wanted to film an episode before uh, Christmas comes around. because so I actually do have some things to show you. Um, one of which you may be able to spot. Um, and yeah, I think that's the news. Um, I've got a variation of the seasonal lurgy that is flying around which I'm not surprised about because um, for those who don't know, I'm I'm training to be a GP and literally every other patient I see at the minute is um, coming in with cough and cold symptoms. I'm okay, but I just sound a bit croaky, so um, apologies. The uh, sound of my voice is probably not top quality today. Um, hope everyone is okay. It's freezing cold in the UK um, and that combined with the cost of living including heating your home is uh, no doubt taking its toll on a lot of people a lot of households so yeah I really hope everybody's doing all right Christmas and the run-up to it is really exciting but it's also really stressful and can be really difficult for a lot of people so um, you know if anybody is not super looking forward to the festive season and is feeling a bit rubbish then I'm thinking about you and hopefully you can find some little things to to cheer you up be that watching this podcast or whatever so yeah the other news since our last chat is that the first cardigan pattern was released yay thank you for its warm welcome last Saturday yeah last Saturday um yeah 
really really like appreciate all the support and the shares and the purchases like I'm very aware that it's a sort of squeaky time of year in terms of like people's finances anyway and particularly this year so um you know I totally understand people might not have spare pennies to spend on on buying patterns but like the 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 kindness that everyone has showed by kind of sharing it by word of mouth and like really kind kind words in reaction to the release have, have been so so appreciated so thank you um the pattern is available to buy on my uh, ravelry page you can also get there via my website it links you to the ravelry page and also there's a link um in my instagram bio as well you can buy the cardigan pattern on its own obviously but i'm also doing like a semi-permanent um bundle um, on Ravelry to get the cardigan and the sweater, the first cardigan and the first sweater together for a discounted price. So it's £11 or equivalent in your currency instead of 13 So if you haven't got the sweater yet and you fancy both, then you can do that. You don't have to use any code or anything. It's just if you put them in your basket and purchase in the same transaction, it will automatically apply the discount. Speaking of that, um, Ravelry, God bless Ravelry. <laughs> it's an amazing platform and I'm so grateful that it like makes selling patterns very, very easy, handles all the annoying, complicated things like VAT in different countries. Did you know every single pretty much European country has a different rate of VAT and ain't nobody got time to be dealing with that? So yeah, love Ravelry, but they don't half make things difficult in terms of like just practical things. Um, so there was a hiccup over the weekend. I was doing a promotion for the first cardigan launch. So it was 15% off the cardigan, but I was also running the bundle promotion. Now, I didn't realise that you can only run one promotion at once on Ravelry, so people were buying the bundle, but it was only taking a discount off the cardigan. It, like, didn't recognise the bundle promotion until the launch one had finished on Sunday evening. So once I realised that, I have manually refunded everybody who bought the bundle uh, during that 48 hours. Um, because you essentially ended up paying £12 instead of 11 So I have manually, through PayPal, refunded everybody £1. Um, I'm not laughing because I think that's insignificant. I'm just laughing because it took a while. But I wanted to do it right because that was not what was advertised. Um, so I'm really sorry if you got caught up in that. You should have had a refund through PayPal of that £1 uh, or equivalent in your currency. If you bought the bundle and you haven't had that, then just get in contact with me. But I'm pretty sure I've caught um, all of those purchases. So yeah, that was fun. <laughs> but it no way detracted from the launch and, and how exciting that was. So thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to seeing like more projects pop up on Instagram and on Ravelry. Um, massive thank you to my testers. Um, again, like they're all credited in the pattern but they all did such an amazing job um it's a lot of knitting uh a light dk weight cardigan with sleeves and a button band that are very yarn hungry every kind of row slash round you knit actually um you need to knit two to see one visible row slash round of work so it's time and yarn hungry so thank you guys um yeah you guys are all amazing and I really hope you would consider working with me again. Um, I feel like I've blabbered on a lot for an intro. I think we're on about 10 minutes. Um, I don't think if there's anything else to say before we get into knit chit chat for proper. Don't think so. Um, so uh, let's talk about my finished object that I'm wearing. Yay! Um, I said in the last episode that I would have this finished by the next episode and look what's happened. Yay! Actually, it actually happened. Um, oh, I've just spotted something I need to tell you actually. Just going back to the whole engagement sitch, um, 
I was wearing my replacement ring in the last episode, which I kept calling a fake, and Pete got very upset with me, because he was like, it's not a fake, it's a replacement ring. <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, I was not wearing a fake ring. But now the real ring is back from the jewellers having been resized, so I can show you. It's so pretty, let me try and get this to focus. There you go. Sorry about my horrid dry hands. This is what happens when it's cold and you have to wash your hands a thousand times a day. But yes, there it is, in all of its sparkly glory. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway. <laughs> That was like an insight into living in my brain. Boop, jumping from one thing to another. Anyway, yes, finished object. I said I'd have it finished and I have finished it. I was literally sewing down the collar just before filming this episode, but you know, it's still finished. Um, so I'm counting that as a win. This is my long, long time project, um, sweater number 11 by My Favourite Things Knitwear. I received the yarn for this sweater from my parents as a Christmas present last year, so nearly 12 months ago. Um, and I made good progress on it in the colder months and then put it down over the summer and then picked it back up again relatively recently. And I absolutely love it. Um, I obviously love all my finished projects, but I don't know, I just knew when this was blocking, I was like, oh, this is gonna be a good one, and it is. I put it on and was just like, yes, that is exactly what I wanted it to be. Um, I hope you can see well enough here, but it's just, I love the fit, the, the design, the shape. It's got these beautiful uh, detail on the shoulders. Um, and twisted rib obviously on the collar and on the cuffs and on the hem. Um, I actually did a few modifications, which I will show you one of them. One of them was to make a split hem and I nicknamed this the sweater number Wednesday because <laughs> the pattern for sweater number 11 doesn't have a split hem. But I couldn't decide whether to make this one or the Wednesday sweater by Petite Knit. And I decided to kind of do both. Um, and um, I think it's worked really well. I like the split hem a lot and it was very, very easy to do. Um, the other thing I've modified is the neckband collar. Um, in the original pattern, it's like higher and it's folded kind of the other way out, um, like a kind of turtleneck sort of thing. I guess this is more of like a maybe mock neck. I just, I didn't really want it to be so high and I wanted it to be folded down and I think it's worked out really nicely. Um, hopefully you can see that there. Yeah, you can. So I still did the twisted rib, um, but just knitted it down inside. And yeah, really like it. I think it's enough. It's enough to make it diff. It's it's a different from like a crew neck. Like it is higher than most of my other jumpers, but it's not like. Sometimes I see these jumpers, and I think it maybe depends on how you knit them and what kind of neck you have. But I sometimes just think they look like a neck brace. <laughs> you know, like when people break their collarbone, or clavicle, and then you have to wear those like foam things. I just can't get <laughs> get that out of my head, so <clears throat> not for me on this one. I think as well because of the yarn, like it's so stiff and like in a good way. Um, yeah, I just wanted to do it like this. I've seen quite a few on Instagram that had made this modification. I was like, yeah, I actually think that looks really nice. It's now ended up making this sweater look a lot like the sweater number 23. Um, so, we now have a Wednesday number 23, <laughs> 11 sweater Wednesday. Literally no idea, 23, I, I don't know. It's an amalgamation of a few different design elements and I flipping love it and I'm so, so excited for it to be finished. Like, 
in this cold weather we're having. I just think this will look so nice like under a coat, um, on like walks, snuggling up. Yeah, I'm so happy. And like the colorway is very like winter icy um, vibes, as you can see there. So this is Peruvian Highland Wool in Snow White uh, by Phil Kalana and um, held single with a strand, sorry, held, well, one strand of that, held with a strand of um, hand-dyed mohair by uh, the lovely Leia of uh, Raya Yarns in the colorway Artemis. Um, this is what I have left from um, the original yarns. So I probably have like the equivalent of just over a skein of the Peruvian Highland wool in the Snow White. And be interested to weigh this actually, because this is what I have left of the mohair. Um, I have shown this before, but I'll just give you a close up of the mohair because it's so pretty. It's this beautiful, like purpley, bluey, um, hand dyed colour. But obviously, when it's knit up into the fabric, it's just speckly and just it's like just as subtle as I wanted it to be. I'm not a huge fan. Oh, that sounds bad. I'm not a huge fan of hand dyed yarn for me in garments. I just, it doesn't kind of like tickle my pickle, as Laura would say. That's not to say I don't appreciate like the artistry of it. And I think, you know, looking at like hand dyed skeins, I'm like, oh, I, I totally can appreciate that they are beautiful things. I just wouldn't really want a garment that's like, tonal and variegated like that it's just not really up my alley but but I love the plain solid with the hand dyed making the speckles like I think it's made such a nice effect and I'd definitely do it again so yeah really really pleased with this and I'm so so happy that I got it finished to wear in this episode um yeah mission accomplished so um yeah I think that's probably all there is to say on that um next up let me show you my so I've got two whips one is much more nearly finished than the other so this is an FO I've got an AFO an almost finished object and a definitely not FO that's actually had minus progress on it since I last spoke to you which we'll get to in a minute um but let's talk about the AFO first so, um, oof. <laughs> Long time viewers of the podcast will recollect that this time last year I was like busting my guts to make a zipper sweater man for my brother for his Christmas present. I initially purchased a load of um, Fritters Garn by Sanders Garn, had a mare with it because it was too itchy for my brother, I, I knew that. Um, tried to hold it with some drops of brushed alpaca, which has softened it, but I still was like, this isn't the vibe for him. Midway through November, panicked, started the whole thing again in Drops Nepal. Was so happy I did because he loved it and it couldn't have been more perfect for him, but it was stressful and I was sewing in the zipper on New Year's Eve before going to collect him from the station. Um, which meant that I had the original zipper sweater man, like, left, <clears throat> um, over, and I'd done a lot, I'd done probably a third of the body, one whole sleeve, um, so over half, and obviously the collar, because you start with that, so over half, over halfway, um, and I kept saying to myself, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish that, and I'm gonna give it to my dad, and there's like, October moved into November with December looming I was like oh <laughs> if I'm gonna give this to my dad I need to get on it you know um sorry thought someone was at the door nope um otherwise this is not gonna happen so uh I don't know when it was mid to late November I was like right this needs sorting now so got on with it and amazingly I actually think it's going to be finished in time. Yes it is the massive carpet sat on my lap. Um, 
I think my dad will absolutely love this. Like, he is a big fan of like a rustic, um, a rustic yarn and like a, um, a rustic, slightly itchy sweater would just be up his street. He wouldn't mind at all. He'd like think it was really authentic and like love the kind of smell and the feel of the wool. Unlike my brother who would be like, oh, it's really itchy. <laughs> Sorry, Will, but you would. In fact, he came to stay two weeks ago and I showed him this because obviously this isn't for him anymore. And I was like, this is what you were going to get. Are you glad that I made you the other one? And he was like, oh my God, yes. <laughs> so I was very much validated that I'd made the right decision. Um, so I have finished all the knitting on this one. I haven't really shared any of it because it's been like, just spend all the time you can doing it. Um, so it's not really been on my Instagram or anything, but all the knitting is done. I washed it and blocked it earlier in the week and it's, it's very nearly dry. I think just the, um, neck band still feels like ever so slightly damp. So after I've shared it, I'll go and put it back up next to the radiator. Um, the cats have been going absolutely mad because, uh, we have a spare room and the last week or so I've just been using it as like a blocking workshop because it's quite small and you can shut the door and have the radiator on and it makes quite a like a warm compact space for drying wet woolly garments which Pete hates because in his words they stink. <laughs> wet wool does have a smell like I'll give him that of especially rustic nor pure Norwegian wool um but yeah the cat's like they hate being shut out of anywhere. They don't really care about going in places, but as soon as you shut that door, it's like, hey, I wanna go in there. <laughs> and the combination of that and knowing that there's like wool and yarn and like fun things inside, they've not been very happy that they've been barred from there. But I could not have them in because they'd be like making biscuits on all my um, knits, which is not allowed. Um, but yes, I've been blocking this this week and it is almost dry. So I will try my best to show you um, what, I've, what I've got. It's kind of big, so I don't know how well it's gonna fit in the viewfinder. If it's not, I'll, I'll take some, some B-roll, as they say. Um, but here we have the zipper sweater. I would say Mark II, but it's actually Mark I. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love the effect that this fritted scarn has made. That's what it's gonna be like, I suppose, when the zipper is in. Um, so this is the fritted scarn held with the drops brushed alpaca. Um, it's big, it's heavy, it's woolly. I just think it's gonna be fab and he's gonna love it. And this color is really beautiful. It's showing up a little bit maybe bluer than, than than in real life it's more green when it's not on the camera but you get the idea you get the idea <clears throat> um i want it it's so nice it's like proper chunky and right up my alley color wise um luckily because i'd originally made this for my brother um my brother and my dad aren't that dissimilar size wise so I got my mum to sneakily um, measure one of his existing jumpers and I was able to, to be honest it was pretty close anyway but when I was wet blocked it um, I was able to kind of like pin it out and tweak it to the right measurement so hopefully this will be okay. Obviously the elephant in the room is I still have to sew the zip in however I have done it once before, a year ago, so I roughly know what I'm doing. Um, I have got a zip actually, two secs. And voila, I had to hide it from the cats, as is my life now. Um, here is the zip. It, I got the same one as I got from my brother's, um, just in a different colour. So I got ordered this from Petite Knit herself. Um, my lovely friend Simona sells petite knit accessories, but she didn't have the 35 centimeter um, zips, which I needed for the sweater. She's got the like clutch handbaggy ones. So this is it. It's a YKK zip with like a really cool, like bronzy zipper. I hope that's focusing. Um, 
in this like nice sort of olivey green colour. Uh, yeah, so when um, it's, I mean, you don't see too much of the facing because of obviously sewing it in, depending on how well I manage to do it, but it will kind of, oops, <clears throat> just want to show you what it was going to look like. It will be this kind of vibe. It's not a perfect colour match, but I think it's good enough. Maybe I should have got the navy blue one, but you really won't be able to see it particularly. Um, like I'll insert a picture of how the blue one for my brother ended up looking and you can't see much of the zip facing at all. But um, yeah, I just really like the zip, the actual zip zipper itself on these ones. Like, it's just really nice. Feels very solid. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So yeah, that is my AFO. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's really suddenly just blown out yeah that's better um yeah don't think there's much more to say on that talked about the yarn talked about the craziness um yeah I'm just glad that I'm not scrambling around literally the night before trying to finish it because I knew that it might take quite a while to dry um with the yarn and the temperatures at the moment and especially around the collar so fingers crossed everything goes to plan with the zip <clears throat> I might try and sew it in on Sunday so that it's then just done and I don't have to think about it anymore <laughs> um and I really hope my dad likes it I'll let you know I I kind I know that he will but it's just that moment where you're like <laughs> and is it is it definitely gonna fit is he not gonna find it too itchy because this is rustic af um but yes, I would put my money on him, on him liking it. So that's, that's my like family gift knit this Christmas. Um, I was saying to um, the girls on knit group last night, with the exception of Pete, like I've decided that my mum, my dad, my brother, instead of like trying to knit them something every Christmas, I'm like going to rotate, or well, I say going to, I have for the last few years, just on like one garment a year. So like... Dad, mum, will. Dad, mum, will. And it's working out a treat so far. So it was Will's turn last year. Dad's turn this year. Oh, mama, I guess whose turn it is next year. <laughs> um, right, that's enough about that. Um, I need to just get some water because <coughs> this is not good. I just need to reset my camera. So I'll be back in two ticks. Back. I'm just so on brand, can't even. Right, um, so let's now talk about my very much <clears throat> not almost finished object whip. So I've made unprogress on this project, which is fine. It's just quite funny. Um, so I am making Pete, my fiancé, um, a single malt sweater, which was going to be for Christmas, but I'm very aware it's now the 16th of December and uh, unprogress has been made and that now may not be realistic. But it's okay, he knows about it, it's not a surprise, and he knows about the unprogress. So it is what it is. We were talking last night in Knit Group about gift knitting and like how it can be quite stressful but really, if you take a step back and think about it, why do we put this pressure on ourselves to meet the sort of arbitrary artificial deadline of Christmas Day? Like I know if you're gifting something to someone, it would be ideal to have it on Christmas Day, but your loved one is not gonna want you to be miserable and stressing out about making something for them. They would rather have it when you're not gonna end up hating the process. And also, you don't want to end up rushing it or, you know, not taking time over the kind of blocking and finishing stages. So, yeah, we were having that chat last night. Um, so, that's kind of where I'm at mentally with this project. It's probably not going to be done for Christmas. That's all right. <clears throat> I see Pete every day. <laughs> I'd rather it was um, right for him. Obviously, I wanted to 
ideally get some wear out of it before it starts warming up but at the moment that is not looking like it's going to be a problem anytime soon um has that bit of hair been sticking out the whole time oh dear uh so yes single malt sweater by um max Vinetta. very popular design really really cool um can see why it's very popular i'm making it in knitting for olive heavy merino which i'd never used before and i'm doing it in um slate 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 green i've just had a mind mind um fart yeah slate green i'm pretty sure um this is the color i'll explain why it is in such a massive uh ball in two ticks but yes it's very nice it's like a murky swampy green with um kind of highlights of sort of yellow and lighter green in it um i've shown you this before but just for fun here it is again uh yeah really really beautiful uh lovely color and yeah probably just playing relatively accurately there's a bit of glare from the light but you get the picture um so i <clears throat> got relatively far through this pattern i've probably done about two thirds of the body which for a men's garment is saying something at one point i was working on this and the zipper sweater man and i was like remind me why i knit for men again because <laughs> generally obviously big generalization but they're just well it's more knitting than when i knit for myself or for my mum who are the other people that i knit for longer wider bigger sleeves everything just takes um more time and more stitches <clears throat> but yeah i'd done about two thirds of the body and probably two thirds of one sleeve and i thought to myself i should probably get him to try this on and this was the whole point of not doing it as a secret because i was like there's no point knitting this in secret and then presenting it to him on christmas day and then it not fitting and everyone being upset so he's known about it the whole time we tried it on various times when I was working through the yoke and thought that where I ended up, I, I made some um, continuations to the yoke because he wants a smaller amount of positive ease than recommended. So we've sized down, but I needed to make some adjustments to the yoke. Um, and then essentially when he tried it on the other day, I think because we've gone for less ease, which is what he wanted, um, there was just a little bit of like bagging here. Now, I think this is something that happens with like all knitted garments, unless it's literally like a zero slash negative ease, like top or something. There's always gonna be a bit here because that's just how, you know, fabric falls on a body when your arms are down. When you've got such a garment with such a lot of positive ease, like this one, this has got like 30 plus centimetres of positive ease, it doesn't matter because you know you're going to get that. I think what was looking a bit strange, and I'll put a picture in, in how it was looking on him, was that like there wasn't much ease on the across the chest and the arms, but then there just was like a bit of fabric like under here. The yoke was just a little bit too long and probably just a little bit too wide on the like body and the sleeve but it was only kind of gathering under the arms i don't think we can eliminate it completely because i've looked through lots of the instagram pictures and most have an element of that um <clears throat> but i thought maybe we could do something about it so essentially <sighs> I don't want to use the word begrudgingly because it's not, I, I want it to be right, but even the most positive person in the world can't say that it's not a little bit sad when you like rip back all that work. And it rip back, rips back so much quicker than <laughs> how long it takes to knit, right? Uh, anyway, so we ripped it back and I took about like two centimetres off the yoke off the raglan yoke depth so have lost two centimeters of kind of like body width expansion and sleeve expansion re um 
re-split for body and sleeves at that level and have started have kind of carried on um he tried it on last night i haven't done much of the body or the sleeves so there's not much like fabric to try on but it's definitely less um gathery here there is still a bit and we're not going to be able to get rid of it completely um i think if i took any more out the underarm would be a bit there's not much ease under the underarm anymore it's 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 good as it is but i think if we took out any more it would be a bit uncomfortable um so he said he was happy with it i'm gonna do a bit more basically i had knit night last night and i was like i want to work on it but i don't want to work on it if it doesn't fit and it's more wasted work so i quickly made him try it on before knit group and he was like no i'm happy with it enough to like do a bit more work when there's a bit more fabric we'll try it on again but i think we should be good to go so that's why <laughs> this is so big um I don't know how much this weighs, but the knitting for olive yarn is in like 50 gram skeins. And <clears throat> I, because this is 100% uh, wool um, and it's like on the rustica side of things, I like spit spliced um, every time I was joining a new ball. So when I ripped back, there were no like ends. So I just kept winding and kept winding. So this is basically like all of the body work I'd done after the split um, in one ball and I've used a little bit but this is all of the sleeve. <laughs> little and large. Um, for context I have a massive head and this is not far off my head size. <laughs> but let me show you what we've got. Um, so on a few cords obviously it looks a bit messy at this stage but you can sort of see where we've got to so I've ripped back um to the split and this is where we're at so <clears throat> it's gonna be so nice i absolutely love this pattern like with the stitch um pattern and the raglan um so this is what i did on knit group last night like just did start this sleeve um and now there's a bit more of a sleeve for him to try on, but this is what I was saying, there's hardly any like body length for him to try on. So I need to do, I can't even see that. I need to do a bit more really. Um, that's the split there. And that's literally how much body. So I need to do a bit more in order to like check the fit because when he tried it on last night, it was literally just a little bit of fabric, like up to like there. And there's no like gravity, you know, pulling the sleeve and body down to see how it actually sit. Um, so yeah, need to do a bit more work and then check again. But hopefully this time, having taken a bit of the yoke length out, it will be better fit. So yeah, that's my that's my main whip at the minute. Having finished this and finished the knitting of the zip sweater. I'm trying to gonna try and be quite monogamous on that over the like I've got a bit of time off work over Christmas I can just like once we know it bits and I'm not stressing about that anymore I can just sit and like knit away on that um which will be really lovely and hopefully if I can try and stay faithful and monogamous to that knit um it won't be too long until it's done and hopefully it won't be like suddenly really warm <laughs> i doubt it january and february are not known for being warm months but the weather this year has been so nuts I, who knows it's anyone's guess um but yeah i'll keep you posted um i'm glad i ripped it back i really do mean that like i wanted to fit him but um it was <laughs> it was quite annoying once i realized i was gonna need to rip it back I had to like just put it to one side, finish the zipper sweater, block this, and then be like, right, <laughs> now let's do that. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's my FOs and my whips. I don't think I've got any other whips to show you. I've just got a couple of acquisitions. One is gonna be a gift, uh, and one is probably gonna be for like a new, pattern idea that popped into my head the other day um so the first one is 
Ta-da! Beautiful, squishy VIP from Lana Gatto. Um, so I have an ongoing love affair with um, VIP from Lana Gatto. It's 80% merino and 20% cashmere and it is just beautifully soft. I've used it for three Oslo hats. Um, and I'm also in the process of experimenting with some for the first beanie slash hat, which I haven't done any more work on since the last episode, so I'm not going to talk any more about that. But, um, so this is a gift for Pete. He's very lucky this Christmas, isn't he? Um, he has a mustard yellow Oslo hat, which I've shown in previous episodes, which he loves. Um, it's a very funny story. I made a green one for myself in some VIP that Simona from Knit Yarns kindly gifted to me. I purchased this from Simona with my own pennies um, because she is a retailer of, of Lanigato VIP. And, <clears throat> but yeah, when, when I'd finished the green one, he absolutely loved it and went on Simona's website and just bought himself three skeins of mustard yellow VIP and then presented them to me and was like, Please can I have an Arsenal hat? Which was very funny. Um, so he's been saying for a while that he really wants like an either black or navy one and like hinting. Um, and I was like, well, um, to buy yourself a yarn then da, da, da. And to my knowledge, he hasn't because he hasn't presented it to me and asked for it to be made into a hat yet. Um, so I thought, haha, I will get in there first. So I have bought him um, three skeins of the navy blue. You can see it there. It looked a bit. It looked black when I had it over here, but in the light you can show it. You can see it's picking up that. Be it's so beautiful. It's like inky, proper like midnight navy blue. I think it's going to be such a nice hat. Um, and this yarn is just so lovely. I don't know why I'm insisting on holding three up to the camera. Let's just show you one. Is that the right way around? Yeah. Yeah, it's stunning. Really beautiful. So this is gonna make a really, really nice Oslo hat. So my plan is like to wrap up the three skeins and put them under the tree for him. Um, I'm not gonna have time to make an Oslo hat between now and then. And then again, like over Christmas or after Christmas or whenever, I can um, make this for him. Or maybe I can even, um, get him to make it himself. He can knit, he's just only ever made like chunky blankets, um, so I don't know, that might be a bit a bit much, but um, either way he'll be getting his navy blue Oslo hat shortly after Christmas and I think he'll just think it's funny like when he unwraps those under the tree. And I felt bad because like obviously I wanted to have his um, single malt sweater get to gift for Christmas hasn't happened arbitrary deadlines and all so i might wrap up like what what progress i've made of it <laughs> put that under the tree but i can also put that yarn under the tree which would be really sweet and then the last thing i have to show you literally arrived this morning in the post which i'm amazed about because i ordered it <clears throat> on only a few days ago and there's been post strikes so yeah really impressed i ordered this from maple tree yarns um, and it's come wrapped as a Christmas present which is so cute. I just opened a little bit earlier because I was like wanted to have a look I thought oh I'll properly unwrap it on, on the podcast. Um, so <clears throat> when I finished well when I released the first cardigan I just I don't know a new idea popped into my head I haven't swatched or anything for it but I realised that a while ago that I have like quite a few scrap, almost full skeins of mohair of like different shades of blue slash green, um, including the Tilia from the first cardigan, that very bright green. I've got some like dark sea green drops kid silk, which is similar to the um, zipper sweater man, like tealy colour. I've got some like apple green from, um, popcorn bomber I made, uh, I've got like like a more 
an icy pale blue from a jump on made my mum. I've got like a aqua blue from my um a jumper I made for uh, by Kalita Bridge by Joanna. I've just got loads of like a similar palette. I was like, oh hmm, I wonder what I could do with this. Um so I was thinking about some kind of like something like faded or a, a fade, sorry, of all those different colours because they're just they form if you hold them in the right way, they they do form like a really nice transition through the kind of that kind of colour spectrum. And then I was like, oh, what about if I like did like a something striped with some non mohair yarn? And I don't know, that's about as far as I've got. But I was like, I need to order some yarn to like have a play around with. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. So um, I'm excited to do a bit of swatching, swatching and seeing. Um, and the yarn I went with, I really, really like this Peruvian Highland wool, but in my head, this design, whatever it ends up being, won't be quite so um, bulky. Like this is like worsted, 50 grams is 100 meters. I didn't want something quite as bulky. So Phil Kalana do the same wool as in the Peruvian Highland wool, but in a um, <clears throat> lighter yarn, basically. And it's the Panilla. Um, or Panilla, I'm not quite sure how you say it. So anyway, that's what I ordered. Sorry for the rustling that's about to occur. Let me unwrap my Christmas present. Yay! Woohoo! Oh, ho, ho. let's take some out. So I ordered it in like very light grey because I wanted something neutral because of all the colours of the mohair. But <clears throat> I just made something white and my first sweater is like marzipan. So I was like, let's go for like a very light grey. And oh, wow, yes, that's really nice. So this is it. Let's have some focus, please. So this is Phil Kalana Panilla. Um, and this is in the colour Very Light Grey. And that is probably quite accurate, the colour that's picking up. So it's the same as the Peruvian Highland Wool, but it's just um, 175 metres and 50 grams instead of 100. So it's recommended on three and a half to four millimetre needles. So we will swatch and see. Oh, I am excited now. That is going to be lovely. Sort of like... um a mild light grey, like a heathered sort of situation. So I have got, yeah, eight, eight skeins of that. Um, so I will keep you posted. I don't know, I, I'm not sure if it's gonna be a cardi or a sweater. I quite like the idea of trying, like, because every, every, the two designs I have <laughs> um, are both like raglans. So I quite like the idea of trying a drop shoulder and having made this, I feel a bit more confident as to how to give that a go. Um, so possibly I'm imagining something like drop shoulder, round neck, folded collar of like the gray, panilla, but then with some like colored mohair stripes, each stripe being a different color and fading through that color set. Not sure if it would start here or, ma or maybe under the, when you finish the yoke, that might make things easier, practically. Just sleeve stripes, just body stripes. I'm not sure. I also think it would look really cool as a cardigan design. Stripes or something else. I don't know. I'm going to have a play around and see. Um. Yeah, that's... That's the plan. So I think that's everything. Um, what time are we on? Half one. Cool. So I've got just under an hour before we need to go and pick the Kit Kats up. Um, I hope they're okay. Um, there's no way they're going to wear the cone of shame, you know, the collar, animal collar things. So I don't think Hugo will need one because he's just had a snip snip. Molly has had like a full salpingo oophorectomy is the medical term. All her bits out. Um, 
and then she's going to have a wound which she's going to be an absolute nightmare for trying to lick and get to so we bought her on the advice of the vets we bought her a little like newborn baby grow <laughs> they were like if you don't think she'll wear a collar and they are really annoying and they like have implications for them trying to eat and stuff um you can try a baby grow because it means they literally cannot get to their flank wound um so i took the baby grow with me this morning i was like i feel ridiculous but here you are and the vet nurse was so nice she was like I'll see if, you know, we'll see if we can get her into it, we'll see if it will work. She's like, we will need to cut a hole, like, for her to go to the toilet and stuff, for her tail. Um, but, yes. So, I, I hope they'll be okay this afternoon. I, I'm imagining they'll be a bit woozy and just a bit, like, want to sleep, want to have something to eat and just chill out. So, hopefully, I'll be able to get this edited and hopefully even up um, as a little Friday friday treat um this weekend obviously i've got my shift out of our shift tomorrow i can't tell if it's going to be mental because it's the kind of last weekend before christmas or not like out of ours is a funny one obviously it's there for like people who need a gp service but their own gp is closed because it's the weekend or evening or bank holiday or whatever um, and yeah, get all sorts, all sorts through, but there's so much, <clears throat> you know, going around at the minute, viruses and, and things circulating in the community, never mind all this strep A business, so oh, yeah, if I had to put money on it, I think it's probably going to be quite chaotic, so I'm going to try and chill out today as much as I can, and try and shift this lurgy um i've not been sure whether to kind of like how much to share or not but things have been quite tough recently i kind of alluded to the fact that i've struggled with the change from hospital to gp land just like completely different mindset completely different patient population completely different set of problems you know medically that i just haven't needed to know about or haven't seen for the whole time I've been a doctor basically because I've worked in hospital the whole time with the exception of four months and now people are coming in with things that I've just never dealt with before and found that really difficult. Um, the area I work in is quite deprived and there's a lot of socially complex situations and I was really struggling not to like mentally bring stuff home with me um, I was finding it very hard to switch off, like thinking about work all the time, all consuming, consuming, and my anxiety came back with a bang. Um, so I actually took the decision to consult my own GP, which is hard. It was, it's weird when you're a doctor, like speaking to your own doctor, because like you know what the answer should be but obviously you're not necessarily thinking objectively about yourself um so we made the decision that i was gonna start some medication which i've done um it was i didn't know how i felt about it to start with this shouldn't be the case at all and I literally spend half my life telling people that this isn't the case or shouldn't be the case but there still is like a stigma around mental health and mental health medication and I just was like felt it was a massive step but I think it was a step that I really needed and I'm glad that I just got over myself um for want of a better phrase and just and did it and and now uh, I am feeling better more like a bit more settled like it's hard to describe like all the issues are still there but they're just not all it's not as like terrifying and all-consuming and as intense as it was like I'm able to sort of <clears throat> compartmentalize it and like put it not away but to one side a bit more like now when I'm at home, 
I'm able to be like, yes, I'm worried about that, but I will deal with it when I get back to work. <clears throat> Whereas before, I was like not able to sleep, not able to relax, not able to do anything without, you know, just this all encompassing fear of what might be going wrong and what I'd forgotten to do. And yeah, it was really horrible. Um, so it's not been a great few months, um, but I do feel like things are picking up to an extent. Um, it's just that time of year as well when everyone's just burnt out and has had enough and is ready for a rest. Um, and like, com contrary to last year when I was working in the hospital all over Christmas day, Boxing Day, um, I'm actually off. So the 23rd is the Friday, so after that I'm finished work for like a week, just over a week, which is gonna be super nice. So I'm really looking forward to like that, just time away with family um, and just chilling out. It's gonna be, it's gonna be nice. Just need to get through the next week. Um, so yeah, anyone else that's struggling, just know that you're not on your own. I think, yeah, so many people go through like difficulties with, um, anxiety and mood stuff and the more we talk about it the better but also just it's okay if you are struggling and it's okay to ask for some help and starting medication wasn't as scary as I thought it was and I know how ironic that is to say as a doctor because I prescribe these medicines all the time and have conversations with people about starting them and how it's not a big deal and how they need to put themselves first, but I'm sure we can all appreciate that it's very easy to say something and very difficult sometimes to take your own advice. Um, so I'll not say any more about that, but yeah, just if anyone else is, is feeling similar and they're not sure whether to seek any help or whether they need to or not, I would just say just do it. Um, you can't, it, it can do very little harm compared to what leaving these things undealt with could possibly do. So that's my Christmas message. <laughs> Sorry that went a bit um, gloomy there at the end, but um, yeah, I just, it's important to chat about these things, isn't it? So I will wrap things up there. Um, I will keep you posted on the knits and the caps and have an amazing uh, festive period, everybody. Take care, look after yourselves, um, knit where you can, and I will see you very soon. Bye!